crises to supersize and grow your business. Crisis leadership strategies. Not sure if that worked or not. Technology glitches sometimes, especially when it's thunderstorming, which it happens to be where I live this morning since the wee hours of the morning. It's been just downpouring, thundering and lightning, etc. So crisis management, crisis leadership can sometimes be impacted and required by a weather or a weather condition. Uh, storms, depending on where you live and what climate you live in and the storms that are inherent in your area, we have to have contingency plans for this, right? Part of crisis management is planning ahead of time for the different things that could possibly happen. This includes weathers, flood, weather, flooding, which is usually caused by weather, uh, <clears throat> different seasonality that your business might be located in. Even if you've got an entirely digital business, you need to keep in mind that things that are outside your control might happen. Uh, think of 2020 and the COVID pandemic, which went into 2021 and will probably be impacting many of our lives and many of our businesses, the ramifications of that uh, experience, that shared experience we all had uh, for probably decades to come. We'll still be seeing some of the nonsense and some of the negative impacts. There were positive impacts as well, but some of the negative impacts that have affected so many people, so many business, so many lives, uh, because people weren't prepared and weren't ready. I will 100% admit, I've been doing uh, emergency action plans and contingency plans and evacuation plans and different terrorist plans for decades, because in manufacturing, uh, which has been primarily my offline businesses have been manufacturing related and physical products related, we had to have things in place in case something happened. Once uh, one of my main suppliers, the owner of the company committed suicide and didn't have systems in place to keep the business going if he weren't doing everything himself. Uh, that that was a shocker and I will admit, I did not have a loss of life of a, a key supplier in the contingency plan. Although we always have had backup supplies on the back burner so that if we needed them we could switch pretty pretty regularly and pretty rapidly uh but but why do we want to have crisis management or contingency plans or emergency action plans in place well number one they ensure the continuity and the continuation of our business when stuff happens when the you know what hits the fan do you have a plan in place or are you scrambling like so many were during the covid pandemic uh, to figure out what you're going to do next in order to survive. And a lot of companies didn't survive, right? Millions of businesses went out of business. Millions of people lost their livelihood due to the nature of the COVID pandemic and the way it was handled. Uh, but what are some of the ways we can handle a crisis well that make us stronger for having gone through the experience versus destroying our business and sometimes destroying our lives? Number one, we need to communicate, 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 be transparent, be upfront, be honest and truthful in your communication. If you don't know what you're doing, it's better to tell your employees, your, your customers, your clients, hey, this happened and we're working on a plan to make sure that we deal with it in, you know, to the best of our ability. This is how it's going to impact each of these shareholder or interested party groups because they need to know. It's when you shut down and you don't communicate that people stop trusting you and they look for other solutions to their problems. And they're just like, well, too bad, so sad. We're not going to work with you anymore. Uh, we want to demonstrate empathy and understanding and compassion to what the people that have been impacted by this situation are going through, right? And depending on the type of business you're in, uh, your customers, your clientele, your target audience will determine how you respond and how you show compassion and empathy to them, how you help them solve their new problems. Because whenever there's a crisis or something happens, a whole new set of problems crop up that people need help with. Uh, we want to make sure that we have a decision-making process that is really decisive as well as agile and fast, right? We can't spend three months in committee figuring out what we're going to do about something when it's happening right now. That's why we like to have plans in place for any possible crisis that could happen. Uh, we actually, in my organizations, do mock crisis at least twice a year. 
uh, in our organizations. We, we have somebody pull a crisis out of a hat and then we have to do a, like a mock trial, respond to that crisis as if it were real. What would we do? How would we do it? We used to do that in uh, quality as we would do mock product recalls. We would re recall a product. We'd just randomly pick a product and a lot number, and then we'd have to trace and recall and get all of that product back. Now, we didn't physically get it back, but we had to know where it all was accounted for to have a successful product recall trial. And we used to do those monthly in some of the organizations that I worked for. It was a lot of work. Yes, but guess what? We never had a product recall. Never, ever in any of the companies I ever worked for do we have to actually physically recall product. I think there's something to be said for being prepared because if you're prepared and it happens and you've practiced it, you can perform so much better under pressure than if you've never even considered the possibility of something happening before. Uh, fostering innovation and creativity. I say if you have a culture of creativity, problem solving, uh, I'm reading a book with my daughter called The Spirited Child and I've got very spirited grandchildren, which I'm so grateful for because I think they're awesome. But they are challenging to deal with sometimes because they are so sensitive and spirited and smart and creative and innovative. And by fostering innovation and creativity in our people, like in our children and grandchildren, we get better results than if we try to think of everything ourselves. Because I don't know about you, but my brain is only so big and it can't possibly come up with all the possible solutions that are out there for problems that we face and challenges that we face in our business and in our life. So why would we not want to empower other people and encourage other people to have that? Create that in your culture, a culture based on, and my whole point about the spirit of child is they talk about being a problem solving family instead of making things wrong, always be focusing on solutions. I wonder who says that, focus on solutions. Uh, and then finally, and I think this is probably the most important strategy when it comes to anything, and especially when it comes to crisis management and crisis leadership, is to lead by example. If you lose your you-know-what every time something doesn't go the way you want it to, guess what's going to happen? Everyone in your organization is going to think that's okay and behave the same way. So if you see people behaving in a way that you don't like in your culture or your organization sometimes, take a look in the mirror and really self-reflect and ask yourself, where did they get that? Maybe we hired the wrong person that responds really poorly to crises and we need to give them some crisis coaching and crisis management and crisis leadership training so that they can become a better version of themselves as well. Uh, so I'd love to know, do you have an emergency action plan? Do you have crisis management in your organization? Is that part of one of your strategies so that you know whatever comes up, you're going to be able to handle it successfully? Uh, have you ever had to implement your emergency action plan or your crisis leadership skills? And how did that go? What lessons did you learn? Did you do a post-mortem after the crisis to see how you could do a better job next time. I sure hope so. That's one of the most important things is to learn lessons from each experience that we have so we can do better next time and continually improve. All right, that's all I've got today. If I can help anybody ask, otherwise have a fantastic day and I will see you tomorrow with another interesting strategy that you could use to supersize and grow your business. Have a great day.